Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Many a True Nerd, and this is Mass Effect No Guns. And today we are going to check in with the council and see if there's anything we can do. Possibly, who knows? Maybe there could be some good news for us. I forwarded the mission update to the Citadel commander. We got confirmation on those reinforcements. Ambassador Udino wants us to report back to the Citadel. The council's massing a joint species fleet to deal with Saren and his gap. And there we go. Sounds like a, a bit of a turnaround. A bit of a turnaround. The council's actually come around after we sent them all the details from the mission, and they've said they've put together a fleet. And we just need to head back to the Citadel to join up with it. And so in we come to the Citadel to take charge of the massive Doom fleet that has been assembled. But unfortunately, we have a problem. Patrols are stationed at every mass relay linking Citadel space to the Terminus systems. So we were promised a fleet to go after Saren, but all of a sudden the council is talking about defensive positions to protect the Citadel. So uh, what about Ilos, guys? If we send a fleet in there, the only possible outcome is full-scale war. Well then, you mind if I head after him alone in that case? One ship going into the Terminus systems won't start a war. I can be discreet. You detonated a nuclear device on Vermeer. I wouldn't call that discreet. Spectre! That's my job! But Ilos requires a deft touch. We have the situation under control. Which part of Spectre are we missing here? Humanity's made great gains thanks to you, but now you're becoming more trouble than you're worth. You bastard! You're selling us out! We've locked out all the Normandy's primary systems until for the notice you're grounded. So yes, though it's never explicitly stated, I don't think, I think the deal pretty much is uh, Udina has basically offered to ground you because the council doesn't approve your methods or your theories, so Udina's basically offered to ground you in return for humanity taking more steps towards, uh, more steps towards joining the council races. Uh, so yes, he is actually selling us out and uh, yeah, I'm just going to be a bit renegade at him because Udina's such a prat. Some really weird textures on those lockers. Really low res textures not loading in. Oh, there it is. There are the textures. So, yes. Shepard's a bit disheartened. And Caden's come to give me a little pep talk, which is nice of him. And Caden helps me up. And in the clumsiest act of helping up I've ever seen. Uh, but never mind. Um, and we almost, but not quite snog. Oh, well. The captain said to meet him at Flux. That club down in the wards. And Katie and Liara are coming with me. So, here we are back in the Citadel, and I'm just going to quickly check around to see if there's anything worth buying with my infinite pile of money. So, I only picked up one new thing, which is the uh, upgraded version of the Colossus was available. So, I'm moving over into the Colossus 9 for... Oh, that's such good armor for light, which is magnificent. That means Liara can step up into my old Colossus 7. And Caden could take Liara's old armor because it's a, it's it's actually a little bit better than his. It's, it's really not that much different, but you know, never mind. The only advantage is it does give him an extra weapon slot that he didn't have previously. That was the only real problem with uh, Caden's arm before. It's uh, it only had uh, one. It only had one slot. In it. Oh, me and me and Liara match. We are now both. We are now both Spider Man. That's great. That's magnificent. Also, I apparently leveled up uh, by defeating Saren, or like half defeating Saren, or defeating Saren enough. So let's just keep that singularity moving up. And at this point, Liara's maxed out everything else, so we may as well get electronics moving upwards. And let's max out first aid soon with Caden too. Now, there's uh, two missions really that uh, pop up when you visit the Citadel for this. The uh, what probably the final time you're actually coming to the Citadel. So you'll notice that uh, people are suddenly yelling, "Remember Shang Chi." And that means, unfortunately, the uh, human supremacist racist party is uh, is showing up. A populist party has shown up and has decided to start yelling things about boo Turians and yay not Turians. Commander Shepard, it is an honor to speak with you. I demand you explain yourself because I don't trust you. Yeah, cram your honor. What's this riot about? I'm Charles Saraceno of the Terra Firma Party. Let me, however, admit. If you were wanting to create a human-only anti-alien racist party, Terra Firm is a fantastic name for it. Well bloody done, whoever whoever wrote that line. So yes, unfortunately, I am definitely not taking his side. The appeasers, as you call them, are right. Sorry, I believe we need to work peacefully with other races. I don't suppose I could convince you to issue a public statement of support for my candidacy. You're lucky I'm not punching you in the face right now. 
Thank you for your time, Commander. Remember Terra Pharma on Election Day, because Terra Pharma remembers you. But not that blue person behind you. We don't like her. That is one of the uh, two little missions that shows up here. And the second is also on its way to Flux. So if we head towards Flux now, we'll find this guy leaning against the bottom of the stairs. He wants a word with us. Soldier, I've got a major situation, and I need help from somebody with humanity's interests at heart. I love this fast-talking guy. He's magnificent. Uh, I'm not just a soldier, thank you. I know, I'm just going to be... Now I've maxed out my paragon and, you know, maxed out my charm. I think I'm just going to start being a jerk to everyone, because I can. My name is Elias Keeler. I'm an alliance negotiator. I'm fighting for humanity on this one, just like you are. I don't remember seeing you hip deep in Geth back on Eden Prime. <laughs> I'm not on the front lines, but I'm making sure our jobs don't get outsourced to the aliens. I need every edge I can get. Specifically, I need a certain mental stimulant. So, you can actually shoot him down at this point, but I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to, you know, go a bit like, mm, maybe. So, let's uh, head over to the med bay and see what's there. We bleed red, yells uh, someone who's clearly understood roughly how humans work. Yes. So, if we go down to the bottom of Chloe's inventory, we now find... Uh, the mental stimulant, a synthetic chemical that improves short-term memory and mental focus in humans. It's the mental stimulant that Elias Keeler asked you for. But above it, we also find a depressant, a non-addictive narcotic used to treat stress in humans. Oh dear. So uh, I think this is, I, I just love to read this so much. <laughs> let's not take the mental stimulant, let's take the depressant instead. <laughs> and let's go back to Elias. Good news Elias, I've got drugs for you. Uh, any luck getting what I asked for? Why yes, here, take these drugs and take them immediately without reading the label. Here, this should take care of all your problems. Perfect. The Solarians will never see me coming. Here, this is for your trouble. Excellent, I even get the money up front. What is... this isn't the stimulant. What did you give me? <laughs> I've given you a lesson. Humanity doesn't need drug addicts negotiating important deals. Get some rest. You bastard. You set me up. Alien loving scum. Yeah, for some reason, when you go back to the Citadel, um, everyone's racist. All the humans have suddenly gone racist, so never mind. So anyway, let's head up to Flux and catch up with Captain Anderson. Hello, Captain. You have to go to Ilos. You have to stop Saren from using the conduit. Okay, and how are we going to do that? There's only one ship that can get me into the Terminus systems undetected, and she's grounded. Citadel oh good, everyone suddenly remembered that the ship can go invisible. Thank goodness. I can unlock the Normandy from one of the consoles in the Citadel Control Center. You'll have a few minutes before anyone realizes what happens. And any other options? There's got to be a better way. Ambassador Udina issued the lockdown order. If I can hack into the computer in his office, maybe I can override it. Break into his office, definitely always go for this option. That's my recommendation. You ready to get the hell off this station, Commander? Yep, absolutely. I've done, I'm pretty sure it's only those two new missions that show up. I think nothing else new shows up. So, let's get on let's with it. it. So, head back into the ship. And after some yeah. decontamination that I'm totally not doing, we run straight into another cutscene. So, Udina's just at his office. Anderson's come in to think of something to use his computer and decides to punch him in the face. Uh, this is why I will always do it that way, because if you have him in doing the office, he'll punch you dinner in the face and then apparently get away with it. If he tries to break into Citadel Control, he will, he'll do it, but he'll get shot while doing it. Let's go. Get us out of here, Joker. Now. So, uh, yeah, you always want to do it because one, it means Anderson doesn't get shot and two, it means Eugenia gets punched in the face. So always go for the break in the office option. And away we go. In fact, we get a new little unique cutscene of me flying away from Citadel. Always nice they did that. Legitimate question. What is Caden doing? What is he always doing? Because he's always here. What is he doing here? What does he do? Because whatever this bit of the ship is, it was sufficiently unimportant that when Cerberus rebuilt it, they replaced this bit with the kitchen. So, I don't know, I think Caden might just be pretending to do work. Anyway, looks like no one's got anything particularly new or exciting to say to me, so let's just head up to the top. And on the galaxy map, we will now see a new system has opened up. And that is Ilos, uh, the Pangea. Is that Pangea? 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 Something like that. The something or other expanse. And just so you know, um, when you complete Vimai, no other new system opens up. It's not like... Um, 
It's not like on Ferris and Averia where each of them opens up a new system. There is no new system that opens up after Veermaya. So let's just head there. And again, a bit of a fried egg in space and only one system. And that is Refuge. Nothing of note here. A couple of planets with nothing interesting on them. But there is, of course, Ilos itself. And as you can see, Ilos used to be a big Prothean capital city world. But uh, not anymore. It's uh, long since kind of burnt a little bit. So, let's head down there, shall we? Or at least move towards heading down there. Before we do... Caden's come to see me. Commander? Caden, you make me feel like I could take on the universe. And right now, I kind of have to. This can't change anything, Shepard. This is a good crew, the finest I've served with. I don't want to mess it up. And finally, we get to the snogging. Apparently, I got fully dressed up in my military gear while Caden was sleeping again. Bridge to Commander Shepard. We're five minutes out from the Mew Relay. Oh shit, Caden, you better get dressed fast, man. Joker's waiting for you on the bridge. Shouldn't you be on the bridge too? You're a senior member of my team. Caden, get dressed and get on the damn bridge, man. Bafflingly, obviously, now you see the cutscene that implies you're just approaching the Moo Relay and you haven't actually gone to Ilos yet, but um, when you go to the system in the Galaxy map, you can scan the other two planets, so somehow you scanned those other two planets without actually being in the system yet. So this is implied now, obviously, you've only just arrived, so if you've only just arrived, how were you able to scan those other two planets? But never mind, never mind. Picking up some strange readings from the planet surface. Take us down, Joker. Lock in on the coordinates. Negative on that, Commander. The nearest landing zone's two clicks away. Drop us in the Mako. You need at least 100 meters of open terrain to pull off a drop like that. The most I can find near Saren is 20. 20 meters? We'll never get in close enough for a drop. The descent angle's too steep. I can do it. Joker? I can do it. Gear up and head down to the Mako. Joker, drop us right on top of that bastard. I love this little, I love that moment so much where everyone's arguing about where to land the Mako and whether there's room and Joker's just like, I know that, you know, all conventional wisdom says it can't be done, but I can do it. So, you know, just chillax, guys. Uh, but yes, Caden, Caden, mm, do I want Caden with me? <sighs> Tough one. Yeah, I do actually. I think I do want Caden with me. I think that is the most sensible option. So, Liara and Caden. And down we go. I think that little green, that little green wibbliness was supposed to represent our stealth systems. And there's Saren with his Geth escort heading into Ilos. And there's Joker doing his piloting. And he drops us off, then pulls out in a hurry. But sadly, we are just, just too late. Saren manages to close the blast doors behind him. And here we go. First couple of enemies we can uh, deal with in the vaguely conventional manner. Just by uh, just by stomping on them with the Mako. However, having dealt with the first few enemies, I'm willing to be corrected on this. But I'm pretty sure there's no way to fit the Mako through this gap. It's much tighter by far even than the gap that you can find when you're, uh, when you're taking on Liara. It's just like even though you can get yourself up sideways... It just doesn't even seem close, and it's closed at the top, so you can't launch yourself over it because of all these roots here, and there's just a lot that can't be done. There's a load of invisible walls to this whole area, too. So, uh, to my mind, I think it can't be done, so I'm not even going to try and sneak the Mako through, because I'm pretty sure it cannot be done. Luckily, there is plenty to keep us entertained in this area before we get much further. So, first things first, flipping armature. Luckily, since the last time we met an armature, They've got a lot easier to deal with. Yeah, they can't do much to me now. Now we just throw all our tech powers at them and it's not really a problem. Yep, not really an issue. Guys, go back over there, please. Go back over there. Does my throw do anything? Oh, my throw knocks them down now. Well, that's good. That is good. Okay, just run for cover. And hit them with anything we've got. Is he dead yet? Yes, one of them's dead. Good. 
And with only one of them left, that's much easier. The only problem with this area is there's two armatures. And two armatures are a problem because, yes, two armatures mean they can flank you. Completely by accident, mine. They don't mean to do it. It's wholly by accident. But, uh, yeah. As you can see now, my advanced warp is, ooh, much better at dealing with these guys now. So, much less worried than it used to be. Nolly says, my throw is apparently now strong enough to knock them off their feet, which is great. Can my lift do anything? Ooh, my lift can lift armatures. I didn't know that. Apparently, yeah, if you get lift high enough, that does happen. Excellent. Oh, poor thing. Lift. Oh, dear. That would have hurt if that had hit. That would have hurt if that had hit. Go over that way, because I'm pretty sure that will knock you out of bounds, hopefully. Oh, not quite. Okay. Liara. And finish him off, Caden. Lovely. Dead by overload. Beautiful. So, yes, not too bad armatures in this area. They're not that bad. No, actually, if I recall correctly, the rest of this mission is actually much easier than that. Uh, that's the only time you're going to be forced to take on uh, armatures. Incidentally, I love the artwork on Ilos, by the way. All these kind of really creepy statues. Obviously, they're creepy to us, but I don't know, to uh, presumably to uh, the Protheans, they weren't. Presumably, they were uh, beautiful. Or maybe the Protheans just had a thing for slightly creepy things. Who knows? So yes, this may look a little bit unfamiliar to some of you, because this is not the typical way to go. Um, this is the low route, so if you go left after you beat the armatures, you can go down and around. It's not the common way to go at all. Normally, you just kind of keep going the high route. I think most people just pass this bit by without even realising. Uh, so yes, that is... Uh, I don't know, it's cool though. It is very, very cool. So really, there's nothing there but much loot. But really, what you want to do then is, yes, turn right where we turned left to go down that way. And uh, go under what I always assumed is a bridge. It's probably not a bridge. It's just some overhanging vines. But, you know, never mind. And uh, get round into this area that I believe is called the courtyard on the map. And here we go. Here's the courtyard. With a nice oaf. <laughs> nice singularity deals with that, though. And just wait for them to go back over that. Oi, oi, back over that. That'll do. Oi, oi, oi. Who's attacking Caden? Oi. You shot my boyfriend. Prepare to die. In this case, sorry. I can't even be bothered to kill you. Oh, your shield's coming back up. Well, that's good news for you. Your life is really looking up right now. It's also heading up right now. And then in just a second. Oh, dear. Oh. Oh, dear. Gravity. Gravity, you cruel mistress. So that's the upper city, already dealt with, nice and quick. Though the more difficult bit is the lower city, which we're heading down into now. I'm sure, actually, I'm not sure what it is called. I will check in a moment. Okay, apparently this is officially the security station. So here's how I recommend you do this bit. Leave your companions a little bit far back. And then start using your powers purely for crowd controlling purposes. You think you saw something there? That is what you want to do. Alright. That Geth Prime, keep him off his feet. Everyone else, get the singularity. And then hit these things when they show up. And you'll have armatures on your side. So those are now my armatures. And then just use your powers to distract everyone else as best you can. And then just get out of there. And you can already see that that armature just annihilated the Geth Prime. And there's another one this side. So now we've got two armatures on our side. And uh, yeah, they're under a lot of fire. Yep, as you can see, pretty much the armatures are one hit kills. And now the armatures are coming out and they're on my side. Oh yeah, this is this is what it's all about. Get the armatures on yours. But I'm pretty sure the armatures just won. The armatures did just kill everything. These are my armatures. Excellent. Oh, no, no, there's definitely something still alive because he's trying to do something. There's more as well. Here's a third one. And I think there's a fourth as well. Yeah, there's a fourth. So, uh, yep. Yeah. There's number four. And now we've got all of the damn things. Oh, hello. Oh, a Geth Prime got stuck up there. All right. Okay, guys, just run, just run, just run. Let's see if we can get this damn Geth Prime down. And now, yep, here comes Geth Prime. Liara? 
lift him up and absolutely annihilated. The armatures just swing in and they can... Ah, oh, it's so nice to have armatures on your side. It means like for the, pretty much the only time in the game you've got heavy artillery support. Because uh, other than that, it just generally doesn't really happen. But uh, yes, there's one moment in the game you do. And I strongly suggest, especially on the high difficulties, just basically make your entire... Just burn out every single one of your powers. It doesn't matter. Burn out all your powers just to get at least a couple of those out before retreating. Because they are so damn useful. And you know what? I'm letting them live. Because there's no reason for me to kill them. They're on my side. They're my friends. They are my armatures. So... Hi guys, welcome to the team. You can replace Ashley Williams. In fact, I already like you better than Ashley Williams. <laughs> Stupid Ashley Williams. And then just head upstairs and find yourself a security panel to open. Degraded. It cannot be stopped. It cannot be stopped. So yes, we've got a bit of a garbled message about something that cannot be stopped. And I'm willing to put in an educated guess that refers to the Reapers, but uh, yeah, it doesn't actually uh, it doesn't actually help that much. But that done, time to head to the elevator. We turn off the security alert so we can head back to where we were. And conveniently, there's a little shortcut here. So here we are. We're back at the starting bit where we fought against those pair of armatures. Except now we can head back to the Mako, and the door will be open. So now we just head up this incredibly long ramp, and basically. Uh, the characters will have a little bit of a chat, but basically they'll identify that all these items that are poking out are stasis pods. Oh, so we're heading into a little bit of trouble. Oh, oh completely messed that one up. Uh, so just run those guys over. Yep, fine. And just wait for them to pop up. Stomp! <laughs> oh, I love doing a little stompy motion on them with my tank. It's lovely. Totally what the Mako was built for. Anyway, let's crack on. And we will see mysterious, impenetrable wall of light if we do. This. But in fact, this isn't really a trap so much as an invitation to come over to this door on the right. And if we head down here, we find our way to Vigil, a VI that wants to give us all the information in the world in the longest damn cutscene imaginable. So yes, this is a Prothean VI who wants to give us information, but he will give it to us incredibly slowly, so I'm just going to give you the important gist of it. The main thing is, as you may recall, I kind of asked you to remember from a couple of parts ago, uh, large amounts of technology around the galaxy were set up by the Reapers in order to basically make sure that things shaped as they wanted it to be shaped. The crucial bit of that is the Citadel itself was built by the Reapers, and it's a giant Mass Effect relay. The entire, the core of their attack is going to be, that turns on, the Reapers pop through, wipe out the central government, and that throws everyone into such disarray, it's much easier to pick off all the other systems one by one. However, the Protheans found a way to stop that, and have basically managed to turn off the Reapers magically appear and eat the government technology. Saren wants to turn it back on, you need to stop it. The conduit is basically a backdoor into the Citadel that will allow that to be done. So I just finished an incredibly long conversation with Vigil there. It's, you know, there's lots of interesting little bits of lore about the Keepers and all that, but it's, it's not plot critical. I feel like that conversation goes on way too long, so yes. The key point is, Saren's going to make the Citadel work as a Mass Effect relay and the Reapers would pour out and eat the Citadel and everyone on it and thus have access also to all the information that's available through the Citadel which, you know, transportation maps, lists of settlements, so, you know, it's a really good position for them to start the invasion from, which is how the Protheans were ultimately defeated so easily. Meanwhile, we've been given a file that can basically lock the Citadel forever, making sure it can't be used by the Reapers to get in. But first, we have to get to the conduit, which is, yes, basically a little mini baby Mass Effect relay thing. Okay. The apparently leveled up again. Magnificent. All right, let's get Singularity up. Add electronics. And finally, Master First Aid. And with that, let's just take our tank through the station. We will be travelling as fast as possible. We will generally be... We'll just basically be following the water and trying to avoid trouble, I say, completely failing to drive the Mako in any way, you know, well. Uh, but all right, let's go, shall we? We'll be, yeah, uh, we'll mainly just be trying to avoid trouble as far as we can. You can see there's already enemies showing up on the map, but we should be okay just to run straight past them. Like on, um, like on Vimaya, the enemy are, they take a moment to line up their shots, and you can be gone before they're really doing anything that threatening, so... Yeah, you see, we're already we're already past them. We're already gone. Yeah, fine, we're gone. 
we're gone. I'm not worried. And we've barely even taken any damage our shields. In fact, I'm pretty sure actually we took so little damage our shields recharged slightly there. Uh, we are healing our shields faster than they can actually take it down. So, yeah. All right. I think we're on the right task here. Let's just run past these guys. We're heading towards something new, but looks like there's only one of them, whatever it is. What are you? Okay. Oh, that was bad dodging. More rocket troopers. Oh, I got lucky on that one. And then just weave a little bit to try and avoid the rockets. Okay, and I'm pretty sure there it is. There, the conduit. It's incredible. Meanwhile, at the Citadel, Saren has finally decided to launch an all-out assault. All he needs to do is get to the top of the Citadel Tower, and that's it. The Reapers will arrive. So that means he has launched a full-scale military assault. I've always been a little bit confused by this bit, because all we, we do know that Saren, all Saren needs to do is get to the top of the Citadel Tower and push the button, and all the Reapers will appear and the war will already be won. So... Why exactly did why exactly did Sovereign attack at this point? Why does Sovereign need to attack? I'm not I'm just not quite sure why. And meanwhile, I only have 35 seconds to get to the conduit. And I'm not in perfect condition. By the way, there's no point trying to fight. There's way too many enemies and you don't have enough time. Literally all the game wants you to do is basically drive in a straight line uh, down this river at the conduit. That's all you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be um, hit an awful lot. But it might be a scripted event that you end up with like no health. And you're supposed to be like gl glowing red and badly damaged by the time you get there. I think it is a completely scripted event. So yeah, there we go. We're badly damaged, but we are through. I'm pretty sure there's literally no way to do anything other than take a load of damage there. Because even if you hadn't taken a lot of damage, um, let's just say the landing's not going to be smooth. And here we come. You probably may remember that from earlier in the game. That's the what we thought was just a little Mass Effect sculpture on the Citadel. But no, no, it's actually a real working mini Mass Effect thing that the Protheans set there. So there it is, the death of the Mako. Because the Mako never comes back in Mass Effect 2 or 3, so I kind of feel like... This is it. That that That's the Mako's corpse right there. It's never going to come back again, very sadly. So here we are. We are back on the Citadel. We have made it through, albeit with the great sad loss of our dear Mako. And there it is. There's her poor corpse. And she shall never get up again. We shall never ride her again. Very, very sad. And next time, next time it's the end. Next time is the grand finale. We will head up the elevator towards the Citadel Tower. And we will take on Saren and sort that out once and for all. And in the meantime, I've been John, this has been Many a True Nerd, and this has been Mass Effect No Guns. Thank you very much, and goodbye.